Hi everyone, I hope you are learning something new from my tutorials and I try to cover all different types of topics primarily based on your feedback. So if you have any questions or if you want me to cover a specific topic, please leave your comments down below. And if I have skill set in that specific topic, I'll definitely make time to create a video on it. And while you're there, please do not forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And if you're feeling extra generous, just find the thanks button that's right next to the subscribe button. Okay, jumping into today's topic, I am going to talk about ONNX model format. Hopefully you know what it is and you will probably hear about what it is uh, if you keep uh, exploring this deep learning topic. It stands for Open Format for Machine Learning Models. And again, I will go through a few slides talking about what it is, what the core benefits are. Maybe it is for you, maybe it's not for you. And uh, in the next video, I am going to show you how you can take a trained Keras model and save that into ONNX model and let's do some tests. And I'll cover two different aspects of it. One, a classification example, image classification example, and two, my favorite, obviously, as you know, if you're a regular viewer, uh, an image segmentation uh, example in uh, the week after that. Okay, first let's jump in to understand exactly what ONNX is and if it is really for you, and I believe it is for you, because if you go to ONNX webpage, they clearly talk about what the core benefits are. The two primary core benefits that they're talking about is interoperability and hardware access. And let's go through the first line right there. It's an open format built to represent machine learning models. So obviously you have a trained model and now this is an open format that you can use to store your model. And uh, the interoperability, I'll talk about that in a minute. It comes from the fact that you can actually convert any model into ONNX or any ONNX model into any other format. And uh, hardware access, they also have certain optimization, hardware optimizations uh, that you can leverage to speed up your run times. And again, uh, if it doesn't make any sense to you yet, hopefully in the next few minutes it will. Now, moving on to the next uh, uh, slide on their, on their web page, or when you click on that link about interoperability right there, supported formats, you'll be taken to this page where you can see a whole bunch of different formats that are compatible with ONNX. And the one that I often relate to is TensorFlow, of course, and some of you, I'm pretty sure you relate to this PyTorch. So if you're training your model and saving them in PyTorch format or HDFI like TensorFlow or Keras, or you may even save your models from scikit-learn, for example. This is another thing that uh, we all use. And some of you may be using MATLAB, although bulk of my viewers, I should say the viewers of my uh, videos tend to use uh, Python and not much MATLAB. Maybe you have used it back in your college days, but you probably don't have access anymore. So you have Keras, you have TensorFlow, you have PyTorch the, and uh, scikit-learn that we all recognize already. And of course, in addition to that core ML, uh, if you're developing apps on iOS, for example, or for iOS, that is something you probably heard of. I'll talk about this in a second in a minute anyway. And there are a few other frameworks that uh, probably some of you are using. Okay, and a cafe, I used it a long time ago, but uh, I moved on from cafe to TensorFlow primarily for one reason, because TensorFlow with Keras makes the task a lot easier. So I don't spend a lot of time trying to code and a lot of time actually using the code that I have developed. That's just me, but you are probably a much better coder than me. Okay, so that is that part. And they also mentioned about, again, uh, what, what does compatible actually mean? If you look at the second line here, it's an intermediary machine learning framework. So if you develop your model in CAFE, PyTorch, TensorFlow, whatever framework that we saw, any of those can be converted into an ONNX format. So let's say you are a hardcore PyTorch guy, but for whatever reason, you're forced to deploy your model in Keras or TensorFlow Lite, for example, like if you're deploying on edge devices on, um, you know what I mean. Uh, so you can take your PyTorch, convert that into ONNX, and you can take this ONNX model and convert that into TensorFlow Lite. It's not given here, but you can do that. Yeah, it's part of TensorFlow. Uh, and uh, in fact, you don't even need to convert it. You can actually run your ONNX uh, models using the ONNX runtime. But again, you get the, uh, you get the point here. You can take any model, convert to NNX and convert to anything else from this point. 
Why would we like to do this? Again, I'll explain this a little further by giving a uh, hypothetical uh, situation scenario. And uh, it's not just an intermediate model. It can be used for inference, like I just mentioned, using the runtime. If I go back, you can see you can use ONNX runtime there. But what's the advantage there? ONNX comes with some optimization that accelerates the inference. So for example, if you look at these tests, again, this is right out of a blog, an amazing blog. I leave this link as part of the description or pause and type this entire thing if you want, but copying from the description is easier. And this blog uh, here, uh, the, the, this person, Max, Maxine's, uh, compared uh, compared this ONNX model against a few other baselines, right? So uh, you can see that uh, the CPU time like is much faster for ONNX. TPU time is faster. I mean T4 GPU and then V100 GPU, like different GPU, different GPUs and a CPU. It doesn't matter whatever it, uh, uh, whatever you pick, whatever batch size you pick. Uh, typically, ONNX models are ex being executed much faster. And uh, there is a caveat for this because you need the right hardware to leverage this benefit. You cannot just uh, you cannot just optimize it for hardware and then you just deploy it on a Microsoft Windows, but Windows doesn't have that. In fact, it may hurt you. It may actually make the model much slower. Yeah, so you get the maximum benefit based on my experience when you deploy these on edge devices. Again, in the next video, we'll do that type of experiment, yeah? Um, okay, so that part, so what did we establish that this is fast? And there is another blog that I want you to go through. This is a great article, again, a great blog right here, link is right here. And uh, again, very similar blog where they actually compared this ONNX model uh, against, uh, I believe, PyTorch inference, so ONNX in uh, runtime versus PyTorch inference, and then again, the conclusion is pretty much the same, right? So ONNX inference is much faster. Again, uh, if you're doing this on your Windows system, uh, you know, the, the fast is relative, but you're defining, if you're deploying your model onto an actual device, putting it into production, right? You're using it, then consider testing ONNX and see if that is a better fit than TensorFlow Lite or uh, PyTorch inference or uh, other types of inferences. Now let's look at uh, how you can save these models. It's very easy. I'll show this, uh, go through this exercise in the next video, but if you cannot just wait, it's uh, just Keras to ONNX, uh, install it and go ahead and uh, use it. And it's pretty simple. You have your Keras model that you need to load and uh, define, your, uh, define your ONNX model right there. And then just Keras to ONNX, convert to Keras. And even in PyTorch, it's exactly the same, uh, except it's probably already there uh, in your Torch. So go ahead and torch.onnx.export and you just do your model and you have your uh, input and you have your uh, model.onnx is your output file. So saving this is pretty straightforward. Again, I'll, I'll focus on this aspect in the next tutorial, so let's not worry much about it. But I hope you understand why or, or, or the core essence of ONNX. And uh, let me just walk you through a hypothetical scenario. Let's see, uh, you're deploying your train model via iOS app, right? So you want to deploy it. And in one of my previous videos, I actually showed you how you can take your train model and deploy it as a web application using Heroku, for example. So you can deploy that on web. So there, it's not a native application to your uh, to your device, right? So it's not a native application to your uh, device. It's an actually web page that's actually uh, connected to this backend. But what if you want to develop an iOS app where the inference is happening on the device itself? So what do you need? First of all, uh, if you look at the modern Apple devices that come with uh, Apple uh, neural engine. It's called ANE, Apple Neural Engine. That's part of the chip. And uh, iPhone 14 just got released a couple of months ago. And uh, here is a screenshot of their uh, specifications page. And it talks about A15 chip. It's a A15 Bionic chip, six core CPU. So you know it has obviously CPU, six cores. And it also comes with a GPU. Yeah. So this is not like NVIDIA GPU where you can run CUDA and all that stuff. So it ha they have their own GPU. I don't want to get into those details, but it's a five core GPU. 
Uh, and uh, it also comes with 16 core neural engine and this is exactly what I'm talking about here so it comes with uh, Apple neural engine and the whole point of this is to make sure that uh, that your uh, inference is optimized is pretty fast okay now how does that look like so your goal is to develop a iOS app using a trained model and you probably train your model in PyTorch or Keras whatever you're comfortable with you have either a .h5 file or whatever the .pt or however you save your uh, pickle file that comes from PyTorch now you want to deploy it okay it can be face recognition it can be skin cancer uh, detection whatever it is so deep learning models can work on CPU only on your iOS device and they can be CPU plus GPU or all CPU GPU and ANE and if you want ANE uh, fastest way is by using this right so this is the most efficient way especially for heavy applications where you have a pretty complicated neural network and it takes a lot of time even on your regular windows system you need those to be almost real time when you're deploying those onto your edge devices like ios for example so uh, the framework optimized for deep learning inference using this neural engine is called core ml again this is not a ios app development tutorial although let me know if you guys are interested in that i know a little bit of that i am not a super expert but i always look for reasons to train myself on new things so i can communicate again my whole focus is communication communicating digesting information and hopefully making it easy for you guys okay so going back to this core ml is the framework that's used for deep learning inference in ios so it would be nice if you can optimize it for core ml if you save your model on core ml so uh, it's also built into the os itself uh, what that means is now you don't need to compile it every time you don't need to link it or ship binaries you know uh, for ml uh, binaries for your ml uh, I'm, look, I, I'm struggling to say binaries for ML libraries, both in a single sentence, but you got the point there. So it's, it's completely built in. It makes your life easy when you're deploying your train model. That's the key essence of this whole thing. Now, how does it look like? So all you need to do is, okay, develop your model in Keras or PyTorch or whatever you're trying to do. Just save your model and convert that into ONNX. And once it's in ONNX, you can easily convert that into core ML model and core ML models can be very easily deployed using your core ML uh, framework. And of course that plugs into your final app and what your exact final app looks like uh, that that depends on how you're coding your uh, uh, app. Right. I mean, that's 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 not the discussion here. Uh, core ML uh, can be plugged into your app and this is how the journey would look like once you have a trained model from Keras or PyTorch. Okay, it'd be nice if I am, uh, unfortunately, I'm not as great at uh, I, I, pod, iOS app development. I pretend to know a little bit, uh, but I'm not really at a stage where I should be training you guys. So what I'm going to do in the next tutorial is to focus on, okay, we have a Keras trained model. Let's go ahead and convert that into ONNX and let's see how things look like once the model is converted to ONNX. And from that point, if you want to convert to something else, I'll leave it up to you to convert that from ONNX to something else and continue the journey. But in the next tutorial, I'm going to focus on image classification. And in the one after that, I'm going to focus on image segmentation so you know how both things can be uh, can be uh, achieved. It'd be nice if one of you can develop an I iOS app where you kind of uh, take the camera, uh, you know, take a picture of something and, uh, uh, you know, and, and immediately segment. Uh, you can attach that camera to a very small microscope, for example, a cheap microscope. Attach your iPhone camera or put your camera over there. In fact, my son did that in high school the other day and brought a whole bunch of pictures of, I don't know, leaves or something. But that's cool. You know, once once you have a access to something that magnifies an image, then it's up to you. Uh, 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 your creativity and your need in terms of uh, app development. It's a fun fun project. Uh, for those of you in college, I definitely recommend doing a project uh, on iOS app development for something, at least so you know the process. Okay, enough talking. I hope you got uh, the information that you are looking for by tuning into this video. And stay tuned for the next one. Again, do not forget to hit the subscribe button. Thank you, guys.